Hi folks, I'm Jeffrey Fox. This is a lesson in the uh, module on AI first uh, engineering or big data for energy. I see that's joined with space in a three lesson series. This is less the second lesson, which follows the first lesson. The first lesson covered the, the broad range of energy issues. Uh, the third lesson covers space. This lesson covers a set of um, in, startups in the energy area which we identified. All right, let's get going. So this is let lesson B in the space and energy series. And Bill Gates who has a lot of investments in, in energy, both green and, and just in general, increasing energy efficiency. And these are some of the um, <coughs> companies that he identified. And he has this uh, venture capital organization, Breakthrough Energy Ventures, with a billion dollars in investment, with lots of um, rich people and important people involved. And um, this comes from Business Insider, which uh, found 26 companies, which in general you could call clean energy or new energy or what have you. Uh, as you can see, a lot of them actually are not much to do with, unfortunately, for this class AI. They're really looking at uh, material science, you know, new batteries, new energy sources, new ways of, um, of uh, removing the negative aspects of energy. But anyway, I think it's interesting to see where, where we, we're going in the energy area because the future of this world will depend on doing this correctly. Okay, we will just go through the 26 companies. Some of them like this will have a full page of them. Those are the cases where I discovered a nice picture. And um, this one is um, tracking methane. And it has um, satellites which uh, basically uh, detect the methane and um, then they send it bound to be analyzed by AI. And uh, then this is then supplied to oil and gas companies and things like that, who can then uh, address the, the issues. Notice we have, we have for each of these companies, the actual company website, bluefield.co here, and the pitch book. Um, I actually haven't seen PitchBook before. It's a pretty interesting site. It's full of startup issues. Um, how many employees, last round of investment and status and things like that. And it has the website, which is where I got these websites from. This number here is a bit erratic because PitchBook uh, gives you the last funding and since uh, I wrote these, I've actually changed some of them, and I haven't changed all of them, and it's a little unclear because whether you sometimes you can actually list the total because that's implied, other times you have to list the latest round. And so these numbers are just illustrative. So you should just say, well, this is not a very big number on the scale of, remember, we're investing billions of dollars a year in fintech. Uh, to the, the name of example, I know in health is. Health and medicine, there's also many billions of dollars a year as an investment, just from venture capital. Here are uh, five companies where I did not find the any nifty pictures. Uh, this uh, Seaborg is Danish, um, uh, and it makes a nuclear new type of nuclear reactor. There are a few startups which are still pursuing nuclear fission or fusion. In spite of the negative attitude of the world to that technology, it's uh, fusion might so might make it because it's actually not obviously producing dreadful residues. But the fission, which is I think this is fission, uh, difficult to see they will actually make it in the this aggressive world we live in. Notice this is not a lot of money, six million. It also got presumably these some of these companies go for government grants. Fervo Energy is California. This one is Denmark. Here we have California. This is geothermal energy, and um, this is 
obviously geothermal energy actually a relatively old area, but there's plenty of room to find new ways of tackling it. Um, <clears throat> this one is actually giving you lithium, which is what you need to make batteries. And um, this makes better lithium than other people, so that's pretty interesting. Um, Malta is actually a Google company. Interesting name, I always love Malta because when I was in England, Malta was one of our hero, hero colonies because it survived the war in such good shape. Um, and it, this is, uh, there are many companies in this area of energy storage, batteries or other ways of storing energy. And um, then you have to, because if we, if we have these renewables which don't actually give continuous energy, you have to have ways of bridging the gap between when the, when the wind is blowing, when the wind is not blowing, or the sun is shining and the sun is not shining. And uh, this one is, is more an IT AI company, Varantech, which is doing electrical grid technology. And um, that's, uh, electrical grids are very promising. And uh, they've actually made, I have to say it's just a little surprising they haven't made not more progress, but it's possibly just due to the electrical industry is so conservative compared to, other fields that they're really fallen way behind some other areas. All right, Helogen, and this one has a nice picture, and actually on the website there's a possibly even better picture of this type. It's got a whole array, and these are these as a mirror, which are rotating, and they're concentrating the sunlight to produce very large energy at particular points. And um, <coughs> this is, uh, not trivial, to, again, without storage, because this is this intense energy. It's really for point, point energy, so it really means you can only have your work going on when it's pretty sunny. Anyway, that's pretty interesting. If you look at the start time of these, this is given, they vary quite a lot. Some of them are recent, but a lot of them are quite old, because energy investment is not a new thing. All right, this one's a cheerful uh, company, Arnergy. And it appears um, to be a distribution company which basically sells solar solutions. At least if that's what the website I went to seemed to suggest. And it appears to be based in Nigeria, which is pretty interesting. And you, that sort of is consistent with the uh, with the picture of the employees here, which, uh, which seems obviously have a African flavor. All right. Now we have Carbon Cure, which is uh, quite interesting. There is a Carbon Cure concrete truck, and there's, if you go to their website, you'll find more on the pictures of their trucks. And it's trying to make a better concrete by pumping CO2 into the concrete. Um, and it appears that um, that only they make, that, not, that makes it stronger, and it makes it more carbon uh, friendly. And um, so we have to see how that goes. But it shows how you can really improve energy by all sorts of things. This is um, how to get how to capture get rid of carbon into concrete. All right. Here's Spark Meter, which is more again an AI company in that it is selling smart meters. And um, this is allowing you effectively to, to have an electrical grid with, with useful uh, monitoring features to see what's happening, to be able to control, bill, etc. Okay. Quidnet. Nice name, and this is not just in the Czech Republic. The pictures in the Czech Republic. It is, if you go to the website, it's not especially in Czechoslovakia, um, but uh, it basically is using storing. It's taking these giant lakes, or um, I, this one looks artificial, but maybe some of them aren't, and uh, <coughs> using using them to store energy. 
I pointed out that energy storage is extremely important. And uh, this at least is, a, it looks impressive. I like this, it's a nice picture, this one. Here is a picture which is sort of, um, this is basically making building equipment. Uh, um, and the issue 75 degrees must be the temperature, presumably, you wish to make your building maintained. And um, it's meant to have more efficient uh, um, heating and air conditioning systems. 2012, quite, long, quite old actually. These, so these companies are actually still quite, most of them are quite small and yet they're quite old some of them. Boston Metal. Well, not surprisingly, this is an MIT spin out, and it is on material science to, to um, uh, and it has a process to basically melt metals. And it does it with less obnoxious, uh, less carbon footprint than other methods. So I mean, that's 30 million, 2012. Here is another spin-off involving Tesla, formed by high up people in person, people in Tesla. And it's a little unclear what the, what the focus of this particular startup is. It's called Redwood Materials, and it, uh, uh, its website describes how wonderful it is to live in, uh, in <coughs> Nevada, where they're situated near Lake Tahoe. And uh, they have a wonderful discussion of elements, which are I summarize or something or, or in the next slide. And at least one thing that is described in the news release is recycling batteries. It's full of different uh, elements and you need to work carefully to extract all these particular elements because they obviously they each need a particular attention to be able to get the different parts which make up, uh, make up the day's waste. So waste processing for uh, sophisticated elements is one of the focus here. Now here we have 11 million tons of batteries which need to be processed. So that's pretty, pretty interesting. And here is this elements chart, lithium, copper, silver, nickel, gold, cobalt, tin, tantalum, palladium, Niodium and carbon, and they're all sort of pretty. I think this is one of the prettiest websites I found with the different forms of these pretty well. Most of them are reasonably well known metals. From uh, niodium, I'm not quite certain is so well known, but it's uh, again I used in magnets, but um, pretty interesting. So good for your good for your chemistry lessons to go and visit Redwood Materials. Thank you. Here we have three actually quite well-funded, uh, interesting companies. Actually relatively old, 2004, 11, and 9. Sierra comes from a railroad startup. Um, Natal is building hydropower technology, which is uh, a little more economically, sorry, environmentally friendly than the, the traditional system. So the fish uh, uh, are not uh, disrupted quite as much and a lighter weight, uh, more friendly approach. Form Energy, there is not so much information about. It's a relatively secretive company. One of the major founders comes from Tesla, where he naturally worked on, could have not surprisingly, worked on a lot of important battery ideas. And it's developing <coughs> so-called uh, flow batteries, which other companies are like ESS and um, these are designed for long-term storage. So they're not actually designed for your Tesla, they're designed for your uh, electrical grid where space is not so, the space issue is not such a problem. And what you want is uh, very cheap long-term storage to bridge the, as we've discussed, the inevitable fluctuations in renewable energy production. Uh, Sierra, Energy is in a totally different area. It's in waste man waste processing. 
Here we have ESS, which is also flow batteries. And um, it, uh, it, uh, here you can see some, some of their trucks. And again, it's uh, quite an old, old startup, 2011. By today's standards, that's, that's very old. Um, another one, 2010, and this may also, I guess, come from MIT or related uh, graduates. It's because uh, uh, it's outside Boston, and it's again, it's working on heating and cooling technology, which are more energy efficient. Um, it's like the alarming maybe for the days COVID. They uh, keep the air recycling through the system. Uh, well, we hopefully they have strong uh, filters to get rid of the the viruses that are generated uh, within a building. Ambry, another MIT spin out based on a different type of battery, a liquid metal battery for long term storage. This is also 2010, and also sort of around the same quite high funding profile. Carbon engineering is a, <coughs> a technology for capturing the uh, carbon dioxide from the air atmosphere and uh, thereby um, getting rid of some of the issues to, which are causing global warming. Here we have a fusion. Well, we know fusion is uh, really sort of interesting to me because as I get in. I have strong involvement quite often with the Department of Energy. They've been trying to develop fusion for such a long time. And their approaches are really expensive because they involve these giant, um, uh, what's it called, ITER, I think, that the big international um, uh, fusion system, which I think is in France or, or somewhere like that. And uh, there, is a, there are systems in San Diego with General Atomic and also in Princeton, where there's a big uh, uh, fusion uh, facility to, to where you where you're trying to trap these plasmas, where you are, where they would and, and stop and keep the plasma running for to be able to cause the uh, nuclei to fuse. And this is quite high, two hundred million dollars. Here we have Mainspring, is, uh, uh, which is uh, generating electricity in, with a more efficient fashion. So it has a generator. Terra Par is meant to involve Bill Gates himself, and it's actually classic nuclear um, fission. Um, and. Uh, the picture, though it has a picture, or it could be a picture of almost anywhere, uh, is not terribly distinctive. But it's quite old, 2006. 2007, $107 million, 1366. It's making uh, an efficient way of making solar panels directly from molten silicon. And finally, we have this uh, quantum scape, which is um, uh, developing and gain a new type of battery. There's a huge battery industry because people realize how important batteries are for everything from smart thrones to deployed IO, medical IoT or environmental IoT or industrial IoT through cars and and also storing energy on the grid. So batteries are critical. So developing better, better lithium for lithium batteries, or better non-lithium for non-lithium batteries is a big industry. And uh, this one is designed for cars, and so it's pretty big, 500 million. Quite a high valuation. So I don't, this, these are slightly aside, these 26 companies. But I thought it quite interesting to see the types of things they were doing. And also, I think it's quite interesting that these are not new. They're all, a lot of them are 
maybe an average of 10 years old. So that's quite old for a startup. All right, thank you very much. Let's move. The last part of this series is the space, space, um, space discussion.